emulator I use for Guardian Tales is LD Player. A free link can be found down below. Hey guys, how's it going? It's Kyra here with another Guardian Tales video. In today's video, we're going to be doing 30 more tips and tricks here for Guardian Tales. And this is all due to all the amazing support we got in the last tips and tricks video. I set a pretty ambitious like goal of 800 likes and we nailed that. It took only about a little less than a week here and you guys were very supportive of that video. So here is another one. Now, a couple things before we start this video. I do want to thank the Patreons. We just got another one. We're up to two Patreons now, which I think is absolutely incredible. Thank you so much for the support there. Also for help with this video, I want to thank the captain. A lot of the tips here in this video were directly from him. He's been helping a ton of people out on the Discord. So big thank you to the captain. Lastly, before we get into the video here, be sure to subscribe if you're looking for more Guardian Tales content. And with all that out of the way, let's get into the video. Okay, here's a tip when it comes to pulling for heroes. If you're planning on saving for a hero and want to have the best chance to pull the hero, due to there being no true pity system, on average, you're going to need about 70 hero pulls and 100 weapon pulls. So be sure to have around uh, 45,900 gems. Still not a guarantee, but would take insanely bad luck to miss out with that many gems, I just want to give you guys a frame of reference on what to expect considering good slash bad luck. The last two heroes I've gone for have taken 50k worth of gems, and one of them I didn't even pull. I actually had to mileage her, so this can happen, and this has happened to me two times in a row. I just want to have those expectations out there when it comes to this. So it takes about two months to save this many gems as a free-to-play player, so hopefully you don't get this unlucky every time, but with this strategy, you're going to get one out of every four heroes. Be very careful on the heroes you pull for because it takes a ton of gems sometimes to pull these heroes. Ideally, everyone get lucky. Without the true pity system, this is what can potentially happen for you. So just be prepared. Point, don't neglect collection bonuses when it comes to just in general, but especially when it comes to costumes. This is a really big part of how people get significantly stronger or they feel significantly stronger in arena. It's all through the collection bonuses in items. But if you scroll all the way down, past all these weapons here, it really starts to add up. I remember when I was first playing this game, I was like, there's no way I'm going to actually do this. But at this point, I'm excited at any time they add one of these in here because one in a vacuum is not going to be much, but over time, I'm going to be like, oh, wow, like I've actually gained significantly higher stats than I would have if I didn't actually go for these. Probably want to shore up your roster first and then eventually start to focus in on these as they come through. Uh, one really big way to improve attack, this is something that do as I say, not as I actually do here. Go through the story and collect every one of these until you get the 10% attack bonus here. This is something I need to do because this is such a massive thing. Attack when card equipped. So any card you put on here, you're going to be getting 10% attack times two. So this is a really big deal. I could be getting significantly more here if I were to just collect all the cards. There's nothing stopping me except time. So don't be like me. Make sure you collect all these and get this stat boost here of the 10% attack. When it comes to camo zone, if you're losing a match, you could just leave. You don't need to force quit the app. Decided I don't think I can actually clear this or someone's going to die that I don't want to die right here and then try again. It's going to completely reset you this way. Even if you do beat the stage, but someone dies that you didn't want to die, you can reset it. Also another tip as I'm here, if you're struggling with a stage and you actually have a solid roster, it, but normally a lot of people just focus on their one team to clear this, you could use one team to soften them up and then finish them out with another team. A lot of times if it's really difficult and I can't beat the stage, I'll try to throw in a team first as fodder. Maybe they kill one or two people. Maybe they get people low. Then I go in with my other team and finish it off. So just kind of a nice benefit of having a wide roster instead of just giving up and having to start over again. Another quick tip is that your team comp matters, especially when you're just starting out. You're going to want to have a balanced roster of a tank, a healer, and DPS. It's going to be a lot easier for you if you really focus, especially on healer. I think when it starts to get hard, I want to say around world seven, if you throw a healer, have a tank on there, it's going to make a big difference, especially if your main hero is a DPS hero. Fill both of these slots out with uh, two star characters based on whichever monotype you're going for. Just don't neglect that. It, having a full DPS roster makes it way harder than it needs to be. Applies in all phases of the game. Next tip is going to be don't just keep focusing on characters that are only good in PvP or only good in Coliseum. Roster of characters that are pretty versatile in the beginning, and then you can start to niche down later on when you want to really excel in those game modes. Okay, next tip is going to be about roadmap events. Doesn't necessarily apply with the these style, these rift style events, because you could get most of the way there when it comes to the rewards, but especially the roadmap events, though, is you might not get all the way. Usually as a free-to-play, it's pretty easy to get to like the good rewards here, which would I'd say probably ends around the 
Legend Limit Breaking Hammer. You could go a little further. Like they're not terrible rewards, but if you have to really spend a lot to get there that you wouldn't normally have done that, it's probably not worth it. Maybe you can probably get to this 500 gems. But when it comes to the roadmaps, the other set of events that are pretty common, probably not have enough uh, stamina to be able to do that. But what you could do if you really like the rewards of set roadmap, you could save your daily stamina that you get in the mail. You can start to stack that like a week prior or about a few you know, like five days prior so it stays in here because I believe they expire in seven days. So what you could do is stack the extra coffee that you don't necessarily need in this event because like let's say this event you're already done, you don't need all that coffee. Then the second that patch drops, you'll have all that saved up coffee. You can just dump with that patch drops and it's really gonna accelerate you. So you can get a lot more rewards, especially when it comes to rating that you're gonna need this fully maxed team here. But there's a lot of heroes that are going to get a lot of bang for your buck, even at four stars. A good way to check that is going to be in the book. Uh, you can set them at four stars, no awakening, and see what their party skill is going to be. You can get their full party skill buff unlocked at four stars. And examples of that would be Arabelle, Garam, Bianca, Lupina, Scintilla, that all do that. I would say all of these are going to be great, except Garam, because Garam's usually going to be in the leadership spot. But still, nonetheless, you're going to be able to get the full party buff even at four stars for him, which is nice. But uh, the other ones, are, I think, are significantly better for this strategy because you're going to have your main heroes. Like, let's say, if you have Arabella, Lilith, is, or Beth is going to be your main hero. If you have Skintilia, you're going to have Akiyuki as your main hero. Those characters can be fully maxed. This character can be just four stars and still be very beneficial on the team and really accelerate or boost your damage for a very low amount. It's just a very cost-effective strategy to be contributing for your guild. And then later on, you can max them out if you want to, but you're going to get a lot of bang for your buck there if you follow the strategy. So just always be on the lookout for that. Solid way to increase your damage here for the Scarecrow is adding characters that increase crit damage. So for example, Lucy and Veronica both have that boost there. So it gives you 200% on their, their skills here. That's gonna make a massive difference in being able to do a ton of damage on the Scarecrow. Significantly higher damage than you normally would because this is a very short time frame, and you just want quick Burst damage within the 15 seconds you got here. Those are going to be some of the best heroes if you're trying to get big numbers here on the Scarecrow. So when you're trying to bump up your collection bonuses here, I think the best place to start is going to be your accessories. This is going to apply to everyone. Defense when the accessory is equipped. Everyone needs an accessory. It's not specific to whatever character uh, you have, and everyone's going to get tankier by doing this. So defense when the accessory is equipped, I think it's kind of a no-brainer. Accessories are going to be a really good thing to target anyway. This is the one of the few places in the game that natural three star pieces of gear are actually good. So leveling those doesn't feel bad. Whereas if you're actually doing like staffs or something, let's say you have future princess as your main character and you want to get her attack up. All these staffs suck, except maybe one or two um, or these specific ones for other characters. It just feels a lot better going for collection bonuses when it comes to accessories. Okay, and then another collection bonus thing is these heroes here. And then notice how this number here changes. It could be anywhere from you know, 212 down to like 206, 205 even. You're gonna need to fully awaken them as their five stars. In in some cases, you're gonna need to limit break them at least once before you can get this. Because as you're awakening, if you want to min max on the awakening, uh, there's a lot of things that just give the flat damage bonus or the flat uh, damage decrease in the awakening that is borderline useless. It's these damage reductions. These are completely useless. So it usually takes to get one of these collection bonuses, everything maxed, even the damage reduction. Uh, but this is a lot of resources, totally negligible, doesn't really do much for all that gold, for all the uh, the rare dream stones. Usually if you're going for that collection bonus, just keep in mind that it's gonna norm on average take a at least one limit break before you can get that collection bonus. They're gonna need to be five star and limit broken one time to get that collection bonus. When it comes to most content, you're gonna need a healer. And a lot of people try to get by with just using chain healing and a lot of people also don't have a, a three-star healer in uh, Maya, but pretty much every element has a decent healer to go off of. For example, Basic has Lorraine, who actually becomes pretty amazing as a, as a healer. Pretty amazing as a healer, especially when she has her EX, but there's a healer there. On the light side, a lot of these characters just have built-in healing on whatever main character you're going for, unless the main character happens to be Lapis or Eugene. Um, so if you're going the light side, you're probably gonna be focused on a, most likely Future Princess, uh, and Gabriel's another really good choice too. So those characters have healing built in. On uh, Dark Hero side, if you're going Beth, then you have the shield built in. But Karina is a great choice for a healer. She has pretty like small healing, and just keep in mind that it's all damage based. 
I really liked having her in my team for a long time until like uh, Karina saved me a, a ton and very necessary for a lot of content. I'm bringing up each element because each element, it, it's ideal to have all of the same element for whatever unique hero you're choosing to run in your team, but it's not necessary. You can always just grab a uh, healer from another element if you need to. Aoba is a great healer, probably the best healer in the game before Maya came through. Every single element has at least some kind of healing. Pretty much every class has them. No excuse not to at least use one of them, uh, so keep that in mind. Maximizing your gear. A good place to start when it comes to um, option change downs is going to be instead of focusing on your main weapons, what you want to do, option lock amounts. Notice how it's 10, then 30, then 60, then 100 if you really want to try to narrow down uh, a specific role for the weapon. But if you go to accessories, then even even like a legendary, uh, like a high ranking one, if you try to lock it, it's super cheap. You know, this is all the way, it's only seven. It, it costs one for one piece. It's just infinitely cheaper to do accessories, infinitely cheaper to do shields if they have a shield. So that, that's a really good place to start. Really the only way to buy option lock stones in this game, the battle metal shop here. So this is something, it's hard to recommend this because if, if you buy all these, like let's say you buy 10 of these, that's the equivalent of buying one of these accessories here, but there's a lot of really good weapons here that you could be buying, but the option lock stones are pretty expensive for how hard it is to acquire these metals um, in the game. For the most part, you're gonna wanna focus it on accessories, things that only cost like one to three of these to actually lock something. The main way I farm this currency is I buy the battle pass uh, for $8, and then I believe gives you 20 of them. It's one of those things that's just kind of frustrating how much they're willing to give you if you spend money. But yeah, see, they give you 20 and five option change zones. So probably one of the best deals from a money perspective if you're willing to do that. If I'm not spending money, then it's just through random events that happen every two weeks would be the best way to get them, which is just a horrible feeling way to be able to farm this stuff. But if they, so notice how we got an option change zone here, option change zone here. Those are really the only good ways. If you ever go to the raid and you don't want to go back to the guild because a lot of times you go to the raid and you go back to the guild and you have to leave the guild. It takes forever. If you hit the home thing, it goes to the lobby. If you hit this back thing, it goes here. So it, that's why it's annoying. If you actually, like, let's say this raid's going and you actually click this in the beginning. Best way to leave it is to hit the home button. So then it takes you back where you go. So you're not hitting multiple sections in the game. Just got a little quick tip here. If you're raiding a lot, it's something a little annoying to, that there's actually a difference between both those buttons. If you've ever invested in a weapon that you don't want to use anymore, or you just happen to have a weapon, if you want to get an idea of what's important when it comes to upgrading these weapons here. So if you look at these hammers, the, the level's the thing that matter. The stars don't matter at all when it comes to these. So especially when it comes to weapons, it's all about the level. The only thing that matters is the level. That's the, that's the only thing to look at. Don't look at the star level. It does not matter at all. Okay, so, and then about these buildings, um, absolutely under no circumstance ever, uh, spend your gems on accelerating these this currency is just a nice bonus that you can have if you're going to be signing in I recommend trying to get as much regeneration speed as possible So just building up your buildings just let it take its time It took a very long time for me to get this done But for the most part you're really never going to notice just don't spend the gems on it pick your buildings it, You're really in no rush. It's more important in the beginning when you don't have like these statues done this is actually increasing things like for example this one's increasing my attack percentage the other one's increasing my hp i would focus more on the regeneration aspect than trying to force it down and get those up you can get those up eventually but if you focus on the speed of which you gain versus just getting whatever little upgrade as fast as possible it's going to go a long way in accelerating this and getting this done faster because the meaningful stuff is going to be out of the way and then the little side bonus of this is this shop here that a lot of this stuff costs these SP points so you could just use them there. Into my next tip, I think this is kind of a trap. I want to say I barely can do this about once a day, maybe about once every one and a half days to be able to afford something like this and you get a random weapon. I would rather have it and be able to buy stuff in here that I actually want and can guarantee this is actually good because I think on average, yes, you might hit the lottery on it, but I think over time, the amount of SP points spent on dream stones and hammers, like if you want the consistent way to go it's going to be just having the currency here for this shop you can buy legendary awakening stones in here it's like 300 gems for four legendary awakening stones it's a decent amount of gems i think it's a complete snap buy this is something that 
I personally look forward to. I always check the shop and if it's there, I try to keep enough gems. I wouldn't have enough gems to buy it out because I believe you can buy it three to four times. I forget exactly how many times you can buy it. I, I try to buy it at every single time because it's one of the best ways to get these legendary awakening stones. These things are incredibly rare. And for the most part, these are good. The ones that I wouldn't ever buy as kind of my next tip is gonna be star pieces for, it's like one for 150 gems and the option change stones, which are 300 gems. I think that's kind of on the opposite end of the spectrum where I think those are completely not worth it at all to buy with gems in here. But almost everything else I think is actually pretty solid. And then another thing that's worth buying too is gonna be these things that re refresh every single week is I think it's actually worth picking these up that the 15k gold and then the five hammers for the amount of uh, mirror shards in here you could do this every single week totally worth buying in my opinion I uh, definitely don't miss out on that I've almost missed my window here I'll probably do some mirror rift and pick these up because the I think they they're totally worth it on the flip side again uh, option change stone totally not worth it 1500 which is just crazy to me because if you just double that you could just buy one of the things that you're essentially trying to option change stone. Because the whole point of the option change stone is to essentially, in this currency, flip one of these and get a good roll. You buy two of these. So what would you rather have? Would you rather have two option change stones or one mirroring of worship? So like if you're trying to max limit break this, you're going to need six of them anyway. And you're going to want a good roll. So at least give yourself six chances. And they randomly drop in the, the mirror rift anyway. Most of the time, I don't even recommend farming this, but if you give me the option, if I had to choose between this horrible option of buying an option change stone and just waiting and buying only one of these, then I'm going to pick that every single time. Okay, and then the last tip here is just going to be when it comes to increasing healing, healing percentage bonuses on Future Princess, and it just doesn't work. Like, this is not something that will actually increase the healing of her, and the way you could tell is if, you, if this applies to everyone, not just Future Princess, but all characters, if they have some kind of healing benefit, but they don't actually have a healing stat on their character, doing any kind of healing and percentage boost does not increase their healing at all. Restores all allies HP by 2%, but she's not a healing character. Characters like Maya, she actually has flat healing. You know, yes, she has an 18.5% healing on her weapon, but she actually has a flat healing stat on here that is going to, you know, boost up her healing, and that's what it's going to base it off of. See, so we got 944 for the healing. And then you're getting a percentage based on that. And that's going to be the thing that's actually being increased. So any character that actually has that stat is one that you can increase with, whether it be cards here, the 10% cards, or built into their weapon, or built into an accessory. So just don't waste those stats on those other characters. Can't even benefit from them. So big thank you if you made it all the way to the end here. That's amazing. Hopefully at least a few of these tips were helpful for you guys. And with that, guys, I'm out. Peace.